from Abuja. Hello, thank you for being a part of our show. We appreciate you. I'm Magnus Packle, and this is Magnus Packle GVA. As always, it's all about how we can raise the level of living. That's what it's all about. In view today, the havoc of desperate politics, we pick up the second part of our discussion with Dr. Otiva Ibuza on how politicians can get into desperate politics. But before that, in our hidden economics, who will fight for the poor? Now, up next in our quick view, we see how some countries rank in peanut oil production. That's coming right up. Despite the increase in its total global production, since the 1970s, peanut share in the total production of vegetable oil and meal has decreased following the emergence of soybeans. In addition, an increase in share of the total production of peanuts has been devoted to food purposes. Asia and especially the People's Republic of China have significantly increased their share while Africa's share has decreased, affected by the decline of the peanut oil and meal markets. On the other hand, the European Union and Asia have remained as the major world importers of peanuts. In addition, while concentration of the export market seems to have increased, import markets appear more fragmented. In this connection, which of the following countries ranks the highest in peanut oil production in the world. China, India, Myanmar, and Nigeria. Stay with us for our answers coming up shortly. Still in view, the havoc of desperate politics. But up next in our hidden economics, the poor, who will fight for them? May God go battle for us. Quite honestly, this is often the only battle cry for the poor. But God mostly fights through the efforts of people. So we need a few good men and women that can stand up and go to war for the poor. During 1964 and 1965, Democratic President Lyndon B. Johnson of the United States in speeches first at the University of Ohio and later at the University of Michigan, unveiled something he called the Great Society, with the goals of eliminating poverty and racial injustice in the United States. The Great Society rests on abundance and liberty for all. It demands an end to poverty and racial injustice. New major spending programs that address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, and transportation were launched during this period. The program was later expanded by the Republican Nixon administration. Programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and federal spending on education, which exist to this day, all originated from the Great Society in the fight against poverty. In the year 2000, Nigeria's People's Democratic Party president, Olusegun Obasanjo, in his own war against poverty, reviewed previous poverty alleviation programs and then created the National Poverty Eradication Program, NAPEP, to fight poverty and create jobs for the youth in programs like YES, that is Youth Empowerment Strategy, MAP, Manage Attachment Program, 
Keke Napa Transportation Program and Affordable Microcredit. These programs, although very small in scope, were ultimately successful after initial political and efficiency issues. However, for inexplicable reasons, the Napa program was in theory scrapped by President Goodluck Jonathan, also of the People's Democratic Party. Fortunately, it appears that President Muhammadu Buhari of the All Progressives Congress Party has concern for the masses and is looking at strategies for recombating poverty in Nigeria. The bottom line is that the poor are completely powerless to combat poverty by themselves, but can be resourceful if they have a hero and his or her institutional machinery to rally behind. Clearly, the number one antidote to poverty is well-paying jobs. But to get well-paying jobs, you need education, good health, skills, and an enabling environment that include infrastructure. And then in addition, you will need temporary safety nets for those that fall through the cracks. To be a good strategy, these temporary safety nets must not be allowed to morph into addictive welfare programs. Now folks, before the government comes to the rescue, we must, if we can, in every community, stand up as heroes in the battle to lead victims out of poverty because they cannot do it by themselves. Our hidden economics for you. Before we start our discussion, here is our quick view answer. In 2015, China ranked the highest in the world in peanut oil production at 2,721,000 metric tons. By the way, by way of information, Nigeria ranked number four in the world with 263,000 metric tons. Nigeria looking towards diversification can do better with the right infrastructure, commitment, and skill sets. For comments, adverse, and sponsorship, please see our information displayed on the screen. Today we continue our earlier discussion with Dr. Otivi Ibuza on desperate politics. Dr. Ibuza is the director of the African Center for Leadership strategy and development. He's a renowned commentator and also former gubernatorial candidate in the recent elections in Delta State. Please join me in our discussion with Dr. Otive Ibuzo. The real reason for any uh, signs or aspects of desperation uh, in Nigerian politics? Could it be because of the anemic nature of the private sector? And so the government, the public sector is the, is the real market. Which private sector in Nigeria? Yes. Do you know my views on that, sir? The, the, it was, yeah, that the view. private sector in Nigeria is parasitic, essentially. Okay. We do not have a strong private sector. If you yeah, look at making, many yeah. of the public-private partnership, mm. is uh, another so is that the reason why Yeah, it's partly the reason. Yes. It's partly the reason. Therefore, because like, that is the point. That is the place I started from. Yes. That is the political economy yes. of Nigeria, where the only, or rather, the major business is government. Mm. Yes. So you see that the richest people in Nigeria today are government contractors. You know, a lot of people have complained over the past nine months mm. that since Buhari came into government, business is no longer moving. And I asked them, what were you selling during Jonathan? What goods and services that is no longer moving? And they are looking at me with blank face. Because the business they were doing is contract. Yes. And we have seen from many of the probes that are going on, that they even upgraded it to the extent that you don't do anything. 
You don't register a company, you have company name, you submit the company name to the chief economic advisor or the NAFEF coordinator. They don't normally do that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chief economic advisor usually has nothing to do with and then, I can assure you of that. And then, yes. you, you know, money will flow into your account mm. and you send 80% mm. back to the person and you collect 20% doing nothing, practically nothing. Mm. So, and I think that what the government is doing today it's just that they have not been systematic about it. Yeah. It's to that you have to earn money yes. based on provision of goods or services. Absolutely. The uh, local governments, they barely have any kind of autonomy. Um, they, you, you can't even see them tangibly. They are running their own affairs. Is that a result of, is that part of what we can call a havoc that is being caused by desperate politics. Because I've never understood how a governor would want to control all the local governments, yeah. make sure that they install their own person so that in every single local government, the chairman belongs to the, the, the governor's political I'm, I'm sure you that, understand. That seems to me a sign of I'm sure you understand it because yeah. <laughs> during election, these are the food soldiers. The reason why governors or political party want to control all the um, local government yes. is that the, 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 that's where you have the food soldiers who will ensure your victory during the election. So that is a sign of desperation. It's a, it's a sign of because desperation. you want to keep yourself. Yes. yes. Because, but, you should, but, because you but, should not do that. I think the point you really... You should not install people. No, I think the point really, yes. in my view, is that... It is not wrong for any political party mm. to want to control, but it should not be controlled arbitrarily. But that's what most. Of the that's time what they do. They they, that, that is the wrong aspect. Yes, that's what they are doing. It's illegal. Yeah. Yes, the constitution is very clear that local government elections shall be democratically elected. You know, we need to remind ourselves that why we pursue the way the military from power is because they were not doing elections. Mm -hmm. So state governments cannot fail mm -hmm. to do local government elections. It's patently illegal and it should not be encouraged. I rarely hear of INEC involved in local government elections. Are they, is INEC ever involved? No, he's SIEC, he's state. Uh, yeah, but, but that, that's, that's controlled by the yeah. government, by yeah. the state government. Yes. Is that, you know, you is know, that, you, you can, know, the, you know, can, the, can that bring about good results for a state? You know, you know, we, we are in a country mm. that is in a dilemma. Mm. By our own heterogeneous nature, you know, multi religious nature, we are expected to operate a federal system of government. Mm. And a federal system of government is supposed to devolve powers. To the state. The states are supposed to be semi-autonomous or even coordinate. Mm -hmm. But the challenge we have is that it appears that federal institutions are more transparent and accountable and are more institutionalized and disciplined mm -hmm. than state institutions. Yeah. So whereas we are saying that there's concentration of resources and power at the central. That power should be devolved to the states. Mm. One of the powers that we do is that they should conduct their own elections. Under the monster concerns, in a truly federal state, the state should conduct its own elections, including the governorship. But what we've seen is that the state independent electoral commission are worse than the national. In so we are in a way, dilemma. But yeah. Let's be clear, worse in what sense? That they are controlled by the state worse, apparatus? Worse in terms of following the international standards for conducting elections. Now that's what I'm saying. That, that is, they are controlled, the state apparatus controls everything. Everything, they dictate everything. Yes. I, I think that we really need as a country to become more committed to principles, to ensure that things are done right way. How we, to we, ensure- We didn't know this before until you're saying this now? We know. So, so how come we haven't changed it? 
We haven't changed it because the political leadership, the environment. Mm. But now, mm. I think the environment has improved. At least the tone has been set at the top. Okay. That in discipline will no longer be to tolerated. At the national level. At the national level. But what about at the state level? That, that is the point. Where so, the president has no control. No, no. That is why citizens have to key into it. How? Through their own organization, through this kind of because discussion we are having. Discussion, they yes. know that they should do that. Yes. But they are hungry and somebody usually hands them a loaf of bread and they shut up. That is a challenge. But how you deal with that is to raise their level of consciousness. Mm. You know, you can raise level of consciousness to the level that they will take that money because they are hungry, mm. but they will still vote against them or yeah. refuse to do their bidding. Yeah. Is going to reach that level. And how you do that is education. Because, you know, even though the people are hungry, they, they are very conscious now. Most of the time, they question their, their overlord and say, where are your children? You want us to go and fight? You send your children abroad during election and you want us to go and fight on that? There, there will have to be a lot of education. We have to be able to provide well-paying jobs in circumstances that will free I agree with these you people from the service. I agree with you completely. I had the privilege of serving in the Police Service Commission for five years. Mm, yeah, I know. And I know that the Nigerian police is the least paid in West Africa. Mm. A, a, a police constable receives about 24,000 naira in a month. That is less than what we pay the cleaner in my office. It's really bad. So, no, but, but the real thing is to have real mm. engines of growth in all our communities. That's it's a thing that I have been focusing on for a very long time now, that we have to look at a new kind of community development, which is not just building latrines and corvettes, but, but building industries, making sure people can get up in the morning and go to a job, a very well-paying job. That, that, when that happens, not just there's job. some of this problem There are that a lot of things that can be yeah, job, paying jobs, yes. yes. Even economic centers. Mm. There are productive centers. Yes. Every section of this country has, you know, uh, uh, areas where they have comparative advantage. Absolutely, yes. In, in, in Borono State, for instance, Akasha gum alone, mm can end the country. Yeah. There is a lot of minerals across the country yeah. which are not being, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of illegal mine, mining going on. So the government really needs to go back to the basics mm. and including social reorientation. Yeah. So, so let's, uh, let, as, we wind, as we wind down here, the, uh, talking about the havoc of, of uh, um, desperate politics the havoc of desperate politics. The, what is, in your mind, the chief havoc? Well, I can tell you something that I have in the back of my mind. Um, they, they, people see these politicians get away with, with blue murder, as, as we just uh, talked about. And so I see somebody stuffing ballot boxes and winning. Therefore, I prepare for next time on how I would do the same thing. And if I have to beat people, and if I have to maim people, if we have to kill people, we find a way to do it because the investigations will not bring you know, results. You know, you know the so, so, the, so, the, so, the, so as we conclude, I want you to speak to some of the real um, uh, uh, ills, the, the, the real havoc no, they have that desperate politics inflicts they, upon society. The havoc of desperate politics on society yeah. is monumental. Mm. And it affects all facets of life. Mm. Right from politics, you will get the wrong kind of people into political office. And they will not be able to provide the necessary leadership yeah. for the development of society. You will affect the psyche of the people. Socially speaking, you will be promoting injustice as the norm. And people will come to internalize it. Mm -hmm. That to be successful in life, the only way is to be dubious and ruthless. 
economically, it will lead to destruction of the economic base of society. And so, the impact is monumental. That's why many scholars have argued that for you to develop any society, to bring stability to any society, you must get it right politically. Yeah. And I think that all well-meaning people across the world must raise their voice, as we are doing, mm. against desperate politics. Yeah. And putting, not just appeal, mm. putting mechanisms, systems, and procedures to make desperate politics difficult, if not impossible. Mm. And then to also put system in place for those deviants mm. that will insist on desperate politics for them to be punished. Unless we do that, then society will suffer for it. Dr. Buja, you're wonderful. It's my pleasure. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. As I said last time, desperate politics is bad for society. It teaches that you can use just about any measure to win an election. It also means that the winner may have to use desperate measures to protect his mandate and if possible, retain his seat in any subsequent election. Politicians facing an election can become desperate for two primary reasons. One, possible economic and financial returns. And two, power and stature in society. The time has come for the masses to reject politicians that are driven by these motives. To provide a good experience for the people, we need a society that brings good and justice. In addition to its specific constitutional and legal functions, the government is generally responsible for seeing that law and order are maintained, that the needs of the public are addressed as far as is practicable. Politicians upon election form governments and must therefore recognize that their primary duty is to provide public goods and justice in a manner that would erect an enabling environment for the people in their pursuit of a better quality of life and happiness. I don't believe that any person under the law would need to use extreme and outrageous measures to win an election for the sake of taking care of the people. Any desperate political measure taken to win an election has to be political witchcraft. And as I've said previously, witchcraft is power without authority. So engaging in desperate politics is using power without authority witchcraft. And witchcraft can't ever be good for the people. The most effective way to end desperate politics is for the people to be educated and to have jobs so that they can freely pick the candidates of their choice. Justice must also prevail so that even if desperate politics should win, it can be corrected. I'm Magnus Paco and that's my view. <music>